Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers Workshop. Today in the workshop, it's the axle pump ram. Come on, let's take a look. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today we're going to be making the axle pump ram. That needs to be made from a chunk of this. This is half inch, 12.7 mil stainless steel. Uh, Got a reasonably nice finish on it, but once we're done, I will run them. Once it's in the lathe and spinning, we'll be running a bit of Scotch Brite across it just to brighten that surface up and make sure it's free from any lumps and imperfections. How do I know it's stainless steel? Well, a lot of stainless steels, especially the ones we use, are not magnetic. So you can see that's not attracting, but let me have a look. There's my little ruler. This is just ordinary steel, of course. And there it goes. So you can see that there is definitely a difference not magnetic some stainless steels are slightly magnetic so you just got to be a little bit careful on that rule because it's not always applying uh, so magnetism is dealt with what we're going to be doing we're going to be cleaning up this end because it's a bit crooked as you can see we're going to be parting a chunk off and then putting that back in the into the lathe we're going to uh, this end well whichever end doesn't really matter we have to turn down just a little bit down to about eight mil for about a 10 mil. We've then got to leave a little bit more and then we've got to turn a groove suitable for one of these O-rings here. Total length is 79 mil, 79 mil. Let's have a look. What's 79 mil? So that's 79 mil. Allowing for a bit of cleaning up. Yep. So about that big, nice little piece. Gonna have a little kind of a button on the end here turned onto it, turned down into it. We're going to put in a groove for the O-ring. We then got to um, cross drill 25 mil from this end, 5 mil for the pin that goes through the axle bar, uh, the axle pump yoke. This is a piece we made a while back. So you can imagine there'll be a pin goes through here. You then have the body of the axle pump in between here and the mechanism from the leading axle will push this whole thing backwards and forwards. The rams did it, did it, did it, left, right, left, right, back up and forwards in the pump body and hopefully it will pump water right guys let me get this set up in the lathe and i'll get back to you right guys so got the material in the lathe i've just faced that off use a bit of uh, coolant just to try and keep the temperature down it's getting quite warm so now we're gonna touch off on the side here just to give us a zero to work to or from rather Yeah. And we'll just do a same on the face, just to give us a zero. So we need to turn a stub on the end of here, eight diameter, ten long. So that's three turns and 119 divisions on the top slide as we go. So let's get the first cut. That's about right. Make sure the chuck's free, and away we go.
should be about four mil off, she'll get down to about 8.7. We're looking for a target of eight or just slightly under. Have a quick look. We are at 8.75, 8.8. 8. 8. So, another couple of cuts and that'll get us down to the eight mil we're looking for. So that's... <laughs> Should be another 0.8 off there we should get this little stub down to 8 mil 7.9 would also be acceptable and yes we're at 8 mil on the knocker that's great so now it's got a nice finish on it too we'll break all the corners when we're done before we put this off to length i'm going to go to my wide parting tool i'm going to wind in so we can cut that contact with it sharp that shoulder there we go I took a note, a mental note in the, yep, that looks good. So I took a mental note so that, okay, back to zero now, there we go. When I'm turning this, I know that is eight, so I know what the number was on the cross dial. And uh, I need to come back from that point three of a mil. So that's gonna be about seven and a half divisions. And I'm looking for two and a half mil for the thickness of the tool plus four and a half mil for the gap. So that gives us seven, which is two turns of 96 divisions. So one, two, and 96, that's there. And we're gonna go in until we hit 100. And the marker on the cross slide was 120 minus seven and a half, so 112 and a half. And I think just seven and then get a bit of uh, coolant on there because this piece is getting quite hot. And we'll see how we go. Okay, guys, here we are. Here we go. This is 8.3 to 8.2. Now let's just see what we're at. Ow, man, that steel is hot. So if we're at 8.3, I'll be very happy because by the time it cools down, it will drop it a little bit. We are on 8.75. Okay, that's a little bit. Right, let me just remeasure that. It might just be the fact that it's red hot. Yeah. 8.75, right, okay. Now we're a little bit on the fat side. So let's have a think. I'm gonna take this now. I need to go along 0.9 of a millimeter. It's 45 divisions on, what are we at, 96. 96 plus 45 is 130, 141. So that's 27 plus another. 14 to get me to there. And so that should have moved me along 0.9 of a mil here. And we'll go down to the same marker. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Right, 
So now let's just cool that off a little bit. Got it nice. Excuse the noise. Nice oily rag just to dry that off with there. Careful with this stainless steel swarf, guys. It's like a bloody razor. Never grab it while it's moving. Try not to grab it at all if you can. It's nasty stuff. Right, let's have a look. See, so we need 8.3. Have a look. Still at 8.75. Okay. And the width of that groove needs to be about three and a half. Three points. Where's my drawing gone? 3.4 to suit the O-ring. Let me just move the chuck back. Let's have a quick measure. Pop it down. And we are at 3.253. Yeah, 3.3. That's close enough. That won't make too much difference on the O-ring. Now, we just need to take that down a little bit more. I'll just take it down and we'll see where we get to. Okay, here goes. Okay, so we know the width is good, it's just the depth now. Actually, what's the core on that? Let's have a measure. Looking for 8.3 according to the specs on the O ring. And we are at 253, 354.5, 8.5. Right, I'll just do that again. Take another couple of bits off. Just slowly, slowly sneak up on it. <laughs> Time's a charm, so let's see if we can get this third time. Glad I'm not doing this professionally. I'd never make any money. Oh, okay, let's have a look. Looking for about 8.3. Oh, there we go, 8.35. That'll do us. Yep, that'll do us. Right, so we're going to put a decent chamfer on here. We're going to just take the file and take all the other corners off. Put a chamfer on this one and this one. These two just need to be smoothed out so that the o-ring has no sharp edges to fight against right as always file with a handle on it never use a file on a lathe without a handle right let's get some sharp, uh, some filing done and some chamfers here goes <laughs> filing done yep that's nice and smooth and we'll just use this tool and put a chamfer on here and a chamfer on here <laughs> Pull that out, give it a quick rub with the uh, scotch right. clean up the surface a little bit, and we need to part it off at 80 long. I don't think the top slide has that much travel on this lathe, so I'll be marking it and parting it off, marking it with a blue marker, of course, and a ruler, and, uh, and we'll turn it around, make sure we get it to the right length when we're ready, when we're that far. Yeah, that looks nice. nice yep, okay, right. Uh, what do I do? I'm going to polish it. That's right. Just give it a quick rub with some scotch brush. So I'll move that away. Here we go. <laughs>
don't know if you noticed, but I could just feel a little burr on the end there when I did the chamfer on the end. So I just took the file to just to smooth that off. That's come up nice and smooth. So I'm going to have to mark it with a ruler and my blue marker. My top side doesn't go that far. So we're looking at we're going to let a little bit to clean up. And uh, we'll mark it right there. Right, so let's get the parting tool back in place. Make sure everything's set up properly. Seems to have moved a little bit. Okay, there we go. And again, I'll just part this off at that mark. And chuck side of it anyway. I'll use a fair amount of coolant. And then we can turn it around, have a proper measure once we get it cleaned off and uh, get it to the right length. Here goes. <laughs> So guys, there we go, one embryo axle pump ram. I'll uh, just nip over the bench and have a measure and uh, we'll see what we've got to take off that end. Got to get rid of that tit anyway, that one there. And uh, it comes up really nice when you polish it. And then we've got to come put this in the mill of ice, come back 25, cross drill, uh, five mil for the pin. All right guys, back in a tip. Right guys, so got this, uh... Now it's parted off, turned it around, put it in the chuck, and I'm just going to face that little tit off there, and then I've measured up. It's 80.5 long, needs to be 79, so we've got a mil and a half to take off, which on this slide is 75 divisions. So that will take maybe two or three cuts. Then we'll do a quick chamfer, tidy up with a file, and then move over to the mill, and I'll get the cross hole drilled. Okay, guys, let's get this cut to length. <laughs> Okay, 75 graduations, and I'll do this on the cross feed, on the power feed, sorry, just to get a nice finish. And here we go.
There we go. That's that to length now. Just take the tool off. As always, file with a handle. Yep, that will do us nicely. There we are, guys. Now to length, nice and smooth. No rough edges, nothing sharp. Right, I'll get that out of the chuck and uh, we'll get over to the milling machine. All right, catch you in a minute. Hang on. Right, guys, so the last job here now on the axle pump ram. As you can see here, there's the ram all nicely leveled off with my zeros being on that corner there of the. Uh, the uh, by, you know, mill vice, so the X and the Y. I've come down the 25 required. I've come across the 6.35 because it's a half inch, 12.7 millimeter ram. Uh, plan of operations, good center drill. Go through with a 4.8 millimeter drill. Drills don't really have a drill the size they're supposed to do. This is a supposed to be a five millimeter pin. This is the pin that will go through this, through the axle pump yoke one we made a little while ago uh, so it goes through the oak through the body of the axle pump through the ram through the body of the axle pump and into the other half other leg of the yoke and it'll get a nut on washer on the on this side so as i said i'm going to drill 4.8 first and see if we get a, a reasonable fit if it doesn't go in well then i'll go through with a five which will probably just take off well it will only just take off a tiny little bit and uh, but it will make the drill uh it'll drill a hole probably closer to five mil than it would if i went straight through with the five mil all right guys let's get this done and then this piece is uh pretty much finished we just got to get the um o-ring onto the other end here goes guys it might get a bit noisy like it always does Right, the gremlins have struck again because the chuck key somehow has moved. Here we go. Right, let's just change to the 4.8 mil. I hope you can see that just here, this is on a piece of scrap steel so that when I go through, I can keep drilling. And this piece here is just acting as a pusher to hold the whole thing still and into place against the fixed jaw of the mill vise. Right, let's get that tightened in. Let's get this done. Okay, here we go. Ah, there we go, we're breaking through. Yeah. Now I could just feel that. Careful with that swarf, it's stainless steel at the eraser sharp. Right, let's just feel that and I can talk to you a bit more. Right, so I'm just going to take that drill out now and we'll try the pin. I could feel it, it got very gritty feeling as it broke through, going from, from stainless through into ordinary steel. Now, that's a 4.8 drill. I've measured this pin as a 4.9. And, yep, there you go. There would have been no point drilling a 5 millimeter hole because it would have turned out to be way too large. Right, I tell you what, I wonder if there's any way I can just... I'll just slot that back into there just for a second. And let it drop down. Let's have a look. Pull that out. Oh, yeah, we're well into the steel underneath, yeah. All right, guys, 
Let's have that out. Um, I'll just countersink both sides just to make things tidy. And I'll bring you back when we're on the bench and we'll get the O-ring in. Back in a tick, guys. Okay, guys. So, there we go. That's the cross hole. You can see the a little bit of a countersink on both sides, nice and flush. This is all nice and smooth because, of course, it's going to be sliding into a brass uh, pump housing. I'll just put the little O-ring in. As you can see, that is just proud of the actual line of the uh, pump ram itself, so that's going to form a nice seal. This then has this go through it, and this is driven by the pump yoke. And that goes in and out through the pump. And this is just to make sure that you're getting as much water as you can. Right, there we go. Well, that's a nice little operation out of the way. Uh, gives a tick. I'll be right back. Right, guys. So that's this video coming to a close now. Another piece done. The pump round. It's got the little O-ring on it. You can just see it there. Probably a little black line. That should work fine. Nice and smooth. All the corners are smoothed off. So there's going to be nothing to snag. All right. Well. That was a nice little afternoon's work here in the workshop. So I'll bring this video to a close like I always do. If you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like, subscribe, hit the bell, please, just to get notifications when the next video comes out. Anybody out there who's a watcher, please, please hit the subscribe button. It makes it all worthwhile, especially to me. It's the motivational factor that counts most for me. All right, guys, one more piece done. A few more to go, plenty more to go, in fact. So this is a chef signing out saying, see you later.